So in a previous video, I showed you how to harvest this stuff. And now I want to talk about how you take this and actually turn it into something resembling cordage. Um, as you can see, it's not very useful as it is. Um, there's a lot of methods. Mine is probably the easiest and the fastest. I wouldn't call it the simplest or, or the best. And all I do is you find your middle of your leaf here poke your thumbnail through it so that you get a strip through your thumbnail and then you just pull it out and split it in half. Now some people I've read then say you keep splitting it in half. I found that to be of less use or slower when all you do is you just use your thumbnail here and you pull a piece off just about you know yay big and you take a piece off. Now if this is too big for you or you think it's too big you can split this in half too. I mean it's decent enough. Um, the smaller your pieces, the smaller your cordage can be. If you're big pieces, then it's really tough to make small cordage. Uh, this is for a bow drill, so it doesn't have to be terribly small. So, and you just wash and repeat. You keep picking them off, but if they're too big, like you look at this one here and you say, yeah, that's a little too fat, you can split this one in them down there a bit, but I've found a lot of luck. Um, you can use a knife to do this, but if you do, when you're pushing up through here, you want to make sure you use the back end of your knife down there so that you don't cut it, as these fibers are really easily cut by your knife. So you just keep peeling them out. Like this one's a good example. It's a little too big. I don't really like it. So I can take it in here and try to peel that one down the middle and make it a little smaller. You know, my average mentality is you you never have too much rope, and so if you're just sitting down here splitting this stuff out, split it all out. Um, due to the fact that YouTube would probably be pretty upset with me at trying to post up an hour and a half video of splitting this all out, turning it all into cordage, and you'd probably be very bored doing this. You know, this is this part here is pretty easy. Um, you'll notice very quickly it'll start to turn your hand green. Um, some people believe in drying and and using water to get all the fibers out, all of the, the pulp out. Uh, for most domestic yucca, you don't have to do that, or yucca or whatever you call it. Um, there's no point in in making, in, in splitting out. But when you get into the wild, you'll find that, you see how these are really thin leaves? That is not what you find in the wild. The wild, you find really fat ones, and those ones there you probably need to pound and wash off and get to the fibers. Also, if you're trying to make really pretty rope, you'll want to get to the fibers and not have all this green stuff on it. So when you've got a lot, <clears throat> this is some, this won't make a lot, um, just take three or four of these like this. Uh, the fewer you use and the thinner they're peeled, the smaller you can make your rope. These are pretty fat, so they're not going to make very thin rope at all. But you can go through here either with a knife or the credit card and you can start to to just peel it down. So, and then when you get it like this, you just get it between your fingers and you just take one hand. I use my right hand, I think it's because I'm right handed. And some people say make them even on one side. I say it doesn't matter. Just somewhere lopsided. And you just start to roll it away from you. Just take your right hand and twist it. And if it's, you're going to do it several times, so then you take your other hand and you pinch it off. And then you twist it some more and you pinch it off. Some, some more. I used to do this all the time with my shoelaces. I was probably a freaky kid. And eventually you'll get this thing to the point where it makes a loop. That is one end of your cordage. Then you take this end, so once you get a loop, you put your hand in here to hold that loop. And then this becomes your bottom and this becomes your top. It's important because what you do is you roll away from you and then you reach underneath right here and grab the bottom, bring it to the top. And you let the bottom go and you roll the top away and then grab the bottom and bring it to the top. And you just repeat this. And it's kind of a feel thing. I can't, you know, you just have to keep doing this, make tons and tons of crappy rope until you finally get the feel of rolling it away and then pulling it back. You roll it away, you pull it up. And so that it's twisting, your individual strands are twisting away from you, but yet when you look at this, it's twisting towards you. 
and this is iconic, ironically named re, uh, reverse wrap co cordage because you're you're wrapping it in reverse order of its original twist and you just keep rolling right along and you just keep this fingers just keeps creeping along with it as you move on to keep your cordage straight and you just keep going and you'll start to build cordage it's about that thick uh, this is my finger for reference it's probably an eighth of an inch maybe a quarter of an inch thick it's not terribly really thick well eventually you're gonna find that you know these things don't make very long cordage this is for a bow drill so I need you know about this much cordage and there's just not enough strands here so when you get start seeing one of them get a little sparse a lot of people will say cut it off and put a whole new batch of strands in there and some people that, that's an okay method um, but it tends to leave weak points in your cordage and so what I suggest instead is you take one of these just one you don't don't go crazy with this stuff and like put three of them in and you just slowly feed it in and the way you feed it in is you take your top one you put it right here on the top just drape it down in there and then you twist it in you need to go a couple turns before it becomes part of the rope before you're part of your cordage and before you know it there it is oh I haven't wrapped this one very well it's trying to come out So you wrap it a few times before you know it, this is part of the rope, it won't come out. And so the point of doing this slowly is it does make your rope a little thicker here. But by slowly adding this in, you never end up with a real weak point where your splice comes in. There's a lot of little splices instead of one big splice. And one thing you'll also notice fairly quickly, so that you're going to end up with these little tag ends. I don't know if you can see them. Um, you could just trim those out, or there's actually a way to prevent them from coming in. So I'm still trying to splice on this upper one. So what you do is you take one of these ends, and instead of draping it over top, you kind of fold it and jam it in the middle. So it's, the long part is part of the top one, and the small one's part of the bottom one. And then you twist them together as you're going. And you'll see that doesn't leave any any little tag ends to trim to make your your rope look good and that's that's what you do you just keep going and uh, I actually have a piece already done for my for my uh, bow drill so I won't need this so I'm gonna show you how to do it, how to end it it's really easy uh, so you're sitting there rolling along and you get down and you're like okay this is all I need and that's ridiculous it's like four inches here um, all you do is you just take it do a simple overhand knot tie it off and because of this reverse wrap cordage it will actually never untwine this end here will stay like that forever and then all this extra stuff you have floating around here. You just take your knife out, cut it off, and you have junk. And that's that's the basics of reverse wrap cordage. Um, the secret to making this work is look as nice as this, and this isn't even the best you're going to find out there. There's some people that are really good at this, is to make a whole lot of crappy cordage. Um, my first project I did of any sort other than just making it was I built guy lines for a lean-to that I was building I had a tarp and then I took some sticks and I wanted some guy lines to hold my sticks up and I would sit there and just wrap this in front of the TV and that's that's a good good way to get a lot of practice because you need you know six nine feet of it and it'll take you an hour or more to wrap that mount at least it took me that I would sit there and watch TV and, and wrap cordage for hours and hours and hours and and it was kinda cool though to be able to sit down and sit under my my little lean-to that I built and know that all everything except for the the uh, tarp that I used for the lean-to I built it was mine so this is how you make reverse wrap cordage um, you don't have to just use yucca I like it because it's really good and it's one of the best but you can use 
willow bark, but that's kind of a struggle. You can use um, um, nettles, uh, anything that's, that's got some string to it and some tensile strength that you can wrap like that. Um, coconut husk is another good one. So go ahead and give it a shot. Uh, it's kind of fun. It's not one of the harder things to do, and it's something you could do in your backyard. As you can see, I'm not out in the woods doing this. This is just my backyard.